then your control majesty over any term of day or Gumusi or Jaja the second only of Ife, co-chairman National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria. You are welcome, sir. We also have the Emir of Gwendu, Al Hadi Dr. Muhammad Elias Obasha, CFR. Also, here is His Royal Majesty of the Nanika Atomy, CFR of the U of Monitor. You are welcome, sir. Also, here is the coordinating chairman of the coordinating committee of the National Council of Traditional Events and person of the HBB and Chairman United States Council of Traditional Organs, you are welcome, sir. Other royal fathers here present, Chairman of the State Council of Chiefs, Emirs and Chiefs, their members of delegation, other members of the National Council of Traditional Organs, and of course, the special guest for this occasion, for the 10th General Assembly of the National Council of Traditional Leaders, in person of the INEC Chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yaqub. You're all welcome, distinguished royal fathers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Chairman and Coordinating Committee of the National Council of Traditional Leaders, in person of the HUDP, and Haji Dr. Yahya Abubakar, CFR. Chief Armed Forces Fair in Nigeria, who is uh, represented here by the Minister of the Interior, who is standing in briefly for His Excellency the Vice President of the Republic of Nigeria. Your Eminence, the Chairman of this uh, body. Your Grand Majesty, the Co-Chair of this body, a uh, special invited uh, speaker of the day, Chairman of the Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished members of this uh, council, I greet you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I want to give this opportunity to the member of the Co-Chair. Welcome all of us that uh, have found it worth to come here today to assemble and deliberate very uh, seriously on the situation and the prevailing condition we have in this country, in which our uh, discussion for today had the theme of building a synergy towards free, fair, credible, and value free 2019 general elections, the role of traditional rulers. We are here this morning, but I must first and foremost apologize for the time and the sudden change of venue. Initially, we planned to have this meeting at Nikon Logsi or the International Conference Center, but to uh, certain reasons we have control, we have to shift it to Shadow. Some of us have to go to Nikon and there we are finding our way to this place. Please we apologize. And so for the seating arrangement, we are going to apologize that uh, after this session, we are going to break up, have a tea break, and come back and sit according to our state uh, delegation. So on behalf of the two co we are most welcome to this occasion. We promote Allah to guide us through and give us the strength and wisdom to actually discuss very, very crucial uh, issues uh, in our, our country, in particular our country for peace, unity, and progress of uh, Nigeria. Thank you, God bless. Seminaries Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abukar, CFR, MNI, Sultan of Sokoto. It's all in now, sir. The Honorable Minister of Interior, sitting in for the Vice President temporarily, and the Vice President supposed to be sitting in for Mr. President, but is out of town and is on his way back but ask us to continue our program and he will join us at any time. Distinguished brothers, the traditional leaders in this great country, 
the Chairman Island, our guest speaker, distinguished media persons here. This 10th Assembly is coming a couple of weeks before the start of the general elections in this country. And we have the Island Chairman to give us a keynote address on preparations they have carried out so far and to convince us of their readiness and to seek, I know they will do that, but whether they seek or not, we are 100% ready to support the work of INEP at all levels. We are 100% ready to support the work of the security agencies all over the country. So what we are calling on these two major stakeholders Fair play, fairness, fear of God in what you do, how you decide your responsibilities, so that we have free, fair, and credible elections in Nigeria. We are very happy with the various comments Mr. President had been dishing out across the country of his commitment to ensure free, fair, and credible elections in the country. Now these two major bodies, the electoral umpire and the security agents, have to keep into Mr. President's resolve and stand. And if anybody falters, we'll wait to see what Mr. President will be with him or her. So we're 100% ready as an institution to give our 100% support to this organization to ensure free, fair, and credible elections in this country. And whoever wins, we are 100% ready to work with that person to see the development of our country. We have no country like Nigeria. We can't go anywhere. It was only a one year ago today when we had this ninth assembly, this type of uh, assembly in Port Harcourt, where the IG gave us a keynote address on community policy. I want to ask all of you here and also the IG of whether well, it's not here, what happened to the recommendations of that conference? What has been implemented? Was any of us contacted after that, after that assembly to see how we can implement the recommendations we all brought up? But I could say things got worse because we have more security challenges now than what we had last year. But even in Sokoto now, we have all these kidnappings, killings. Some few days back, over 26 people were killed in cold blood without any motive. Who could have been doing that? So when we come into our close session without the cameras, without the press, we'll discuss some of these issues. And one other very hot issue that's been disturbing all of us is the continuous strike by ASU, where universities are shot for months with our children in, at, at home doing nothing. And we all know that an iron mind is a playground for the devil. Why should this strike continue without a solution being found by stakeholders. So many of us here are chancellors of various universities. What can we do? Can the government work with us as chancellors, put together a forum of chancellors, empower us to do certain things in our various universities so that we can resolve situations, solutions, I mean bring solutions to the problems facing universities before they blow fully into strikes. Strikes should be the last resort. So we use this medium to call on all stakeholders. Let's resolve these issues once and for all. Because strikes never help. They deteriorate situations. So at close session, we'll discuss this and see how we can come up with some of the solutions. So I want to thank you very much for coming. Already announced is expected to come and assure this traditional institution, this body of revered traditional members, on how ready INEC is to deliver. Professor Mahmoud Yakub, thank you as you come along, sir. On behalf of the Independent National Electoral Commission, I would like to extend our profound gratitude to the National Council of Traditional Rulers for the honor, and not only just an honor, but the opportunity as well to address 
the 10th General Assembly of the Council. We are grateful for this opportunity for a number of reasons. First, as the fathers of the people, being traditional and religious leaders in their various domains, you are the closest institution to the people at the grassroots. There can be no better opportunity to convey our message for the 2019 general elections to the grassroots than through your Royal Highnesses and your Majesties. Secondly, this meeting is coming shortly after our engagement with your Royal Highnesses at state level. Officials of the Commission had a similar engagement in all the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory, in which your Royal Highnesses played very prominent roles and made very important suggestions and recommendations. The Commission is very grateful to the Royal Highnesses indeed. Thirdly, the timing for this meeting is very, very significant. The 2019 general election is around the corner. It is exactly 18 days, 20 hours, 28 minutes, and 15 seconds to the opening of polling units at 8 in the morning on Saturday, the 16th February 2016. So we have, in effect, just two weeks and four days to the general election. So I'm going to formulate three questions and try to respond to the three questions. The first one is how are we preparing for the 2019 general elections? Secondly, what are the challenges that we face as the election management body? And thirdly, how can the council help the process and help Nigeria? Before I attempt to answer these three questions, let me give the council some basic statistics about the general elections. Elections will be held in two phases. The first one is called the national elections, the presidential and national assembly, meaning Senate and House of Representatives, and this will be held on Saturday, the 16th of February 2019. The second is the state and FCT elections, meaning the governorship elections, state assembly elections, and the area councils in the federal capital territory, the only part of Nigeria where INEC conducts local government elections. And this will be held two weeks after the national elections on Saturday, the 2nd of March, 2019. There are 91 political parties in Nigeria today. And they are fielding candidates at different levels for the different types of elections. Election will be held in 1,558 constituencies nationwide, made up of one presidential constituency in which we have 73 candidates competing for one position, the office of president. We have 1,068 candidates vying for 29 positions of state governors. We have already conducted seven governorship elections of season. So in 2019, on the 2nd of March, there will be elections for 29 governorship positions. And we have 1,068 candidates vying for 29 positions. We have 1,904 candidates vying for 109 senatorial seats. We have 4,680 candidates for 360 federal constituencies for election to the House of Representatives. We have 14,000 
785 candidates for 991 state assembly constituencies. For the Federal Capital Territory, where we have 68 constituencies, made up of six area council chairmen and two councillors, we have 806 candidates vying for 68 positions. In all, in 2019, we have 23,316 candidates contesting elections in 1,558 constituencies. I've been offered the opportunity to say a few words in my capacity as the Minister of Interior. As you all know that our mandate of the Ministry is to ensure internal security and public safety. Under the Ministry there are five agencies. That is the Nigerian Police, Nigerian Immigration Service, the Nigerian Prison Service, the Civil Defense, and Federal Fire Service. As you all know that uh, Mr. President has made his commitment known as far as 2019 elections are concerned. He is committed to free, fair, peaceful, and credible elections. And it's on this basis of that commitment we are ensuring that we provide adequate security throughout the elections, before, during, and even after the elections. There are no doubt that there are challenges which we all know and the Chairman INEC has made a lot of efforts to make clarification as he is a co-chair uh, in the Security Committee uh, for the election security. It's a great privilege uh, to be invited once again. And here I'm reading uh, just before I go on. Let me say first that uh, the President sends his good wishes to you and has asked me to represent him today. And I must apologize for not being at the opening. There was a clash in an earlier engagement in the state, which I had to attend to. But I'm here, and the speech which you will be listening to is Mr. President's own speech. So I am speaking uh, as uh, Mr. President, not in my own capacity as Vice President. So it is a special privilege to be invited once again as a special guest of honor to this esteemed gathering of our royal fathers, the 10th General Assembly of the National Council of Traditional Rulers. It's indeed an honor to be in your midst, and I thank your Royal Majesty immensely for inviting me. This royal gathering could not have come at a better time than this and the theme, building synergy towards free, fair, and credible and violence free, violence free 2019 general elections. The role of traditional rulers is most appropriate as the country prepares for the 2019 general elections. During the ninth general assembly of the Spirit Council, I recall my promise to work closely with the National Council of Traditional Rulers of Nigeria to take our nation to the next level noting that any government that relegates traditional rulers to the background suffers a setback in her attempt to take governance to the grassroots. Let me therefore thank you immensely on behalf of myself, the government and people of this great country for your support, your prayers, your fatherly counsel, 
your advice and suggestions during the course of this administration. I'm most grateful and happy to inform this revered assembly that our country today is on the path of greatness once again. With your blessings, this administration under my leadership has recorded remarkable successes in the past three and a half years. Permit me to quickly refer to some of these successes. When this administration came on board in 2015, our change agenda was premised on improving security, on fighting corruption, and on revamping the economy, amongst others. It gives me great pleasure to announce to you that the economy is back on the, on the path of growth after the recession of end of 2015, 2016. Through the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, we charted a course for the Nigerian economy for the next four years, 2017 to 2020. The vision of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan is to restore economic growth invest in Nigerians and to build a globally competitive economy. The plan is to stabilize the macroeconomic environment, to achieve agriculture and food security, to ensure energy efficiency in power and petroleum products, to improve transportation and all of the infrastructure that surrounds it, and to drive industrialization, primarily through small, medium scale enterprises. To this end, under the federal government's diversification agenda, the agriculture sector received priority attention and the focus was on ensuring that we grow what we eat and we strive to put an end to the importation of farm products that can be grown here in our country and to stop market monopoly of these products. To upgrading and developing Nigeria's transport, our power and our health infrastructure, in 2017, we issued a 100 billion SCOOC bond from its proceeds, and from its proceeds, we are financing 25 major road projects in the six geopolitical zones, and we are also undertaking other rehabilitation projects across the country in every single state of Nigeria. Many of these projects have been abandoned in the past years because of mounting debts owed by the federal government to contractors. We have embarked on a decisive course of building railways across Nigeria. The first phase of the Lagos Canal Rail, the Lagos Abebuta Ibadan, will be completed at the end of this month. We have completed the Itakwen Wari Railway, the Abuja Light Rail, that is within Abuja itself, and also we have finished up the Abuja Kaduna Railway, added fixed stop to it, and, and at the moment it is running as one of the most efficient commercial services. That we have. We are embarking on the Port Harcourt Mayuguri Railway and the Lagos Canabar Road. Despite earning 60% less than previous governments, we have spent 2.7 trillion on capital development. That is the highest ever in the history of this country. It's one that we have not only invested heavily in, especially in the transmission area, but we've also sought to encourage private investment so that we can indeed become able to say that power is stable and sufficient for industry and for domestic use. Through the four components of our social investment program, the End Power Program, the Home Road School Feeding Program, the Conditional Cash Transfer Program, and the Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program, the we have launched the largest social safety net program in the history of our country. Our Home Road School Feeding we now feed 9.3 million children every day in 49,837 public primary schools in 26 states across Nigeria. At current numbers, we employ 95,422 cooks and over 100,000 smallholder farmers linked to the program supplying locally sourced ingredients. This translates to 594 cattle 138,000 chickens, 6.8 million eggs, 83 metric tons of fish, procured, prepared, and distributed every single week. On the part of the federal government, 
I wish to assure you that we are committed to delivering to Nigerians a transparent, free, fair, credible, and peaceful election. In this regard, security agencies have been directed to maintain peace and order and provide security during the elections. Any attempt to cause mayhem and undermine the electoral process will be met with the full force of the law. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, as an independent institution who is mandated to conduct elections in Nigeria, is properly equipped and free to deliver on its mandate. As a democracy in the 21st century, it is time for us to take our own place in the Committee of Nations as one to be reckoned with by ensuring that the 2019 general elections meet all of the standard civilized processes around the world and are free from all forms of irregularity. I call on you, our dear and respected royal fathers, and of course, well-meaning Nigerians to join hands with the government in building the Nigeria that we can all be proud of. On this note, may I, although belatedly, respectfully declare the 10th General Assembly of the National Council of Traditional Rulers open. I thank you for this honor and wish you very fruitful dedications. Thank you. The Vice President, honoring us participating in our third General Assembly. He came all the way from Remo in the state to eventually deliver the speech, the keynote address. What we can do is to keep praying for our dear nation, for everything to go very seamless and very smoothly. And we traditional rulers we have a very pivotal role to play in our various kingdoms and communities, most especially our female youths. We can see from the demography of the voting pattern from Heineck that over 80% are the ones that are going to come out and vote. So the good side of it is for us to talk to our subjects, for them to comport themselves and go out to perform their civic duties. And on the flip side, we should try as much as possible to call violence and to also appeal to our subjects for us to know that we, the traditional rulers of this country, we have a key role to play in stability and good governance of this country. We have no other country but Nigeria. We know there are challenges. We've had the INEC chairman here. We've been discussing how the modalities of election will be with him for many hours. We also had the interior minister here. We asked one or two questions. And I am very convinced that we've had a very wonderful deliberation. And we have one of good things to take home to discuss with our subjects that hides our horse. We must play that pivotal role that we've been playing as a stabilizing force for their country. On this note, I want to all appreciate the Vice President and particularly the President of this country because the Vice President is representing him here for coming to give this keynote address. On the final note, we want to appreciate each and every one of us too, our traditional rulers that have traveled far and near, coming from this for this General Assembly, the third series of it. God Almighty, 
and his infinite mercies see us all back to our various domains and kingdoms. Nigeria will continue to be great and we will all continue to strive and do our best to make sure that things that are not of good standard will continue to be of good standard. God bless you all and God bless our various kingdom and as a whole, God bless our nation, Nigeria. Thank you very much.